best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see in that. All right. Well, because we are so timely with this show and this episode's coming out towards the end of February, we decided we would talk about uh, Black Mirror season four because that yes. came out in December. And uh, while recording this, it's only been out for like three days. So this is like the perfect time to release these episodes. But yeah. we're going to wait. We're going to sit on them <laughs> for, for a couple weeks and let them come out when no one cares anymore. We're going to let them age and mature a little bit. Yeah, like a fine wine. Exactly. Everyone knows fine wine is better just, just mere weeks later. <laughs> That's how you make a fine wine. Oh man. Um, but so this episode, we're going to talk about the first three episodes and in the next Black Mirror episode, we're going to talk about the last three episodes because there's six episodes for the season. And instead yeah. of going through episode by episode for one episode of the podcast, we decided we're just going to, yeah, we can talk about three. But All right. so the first three was USS Callister, Archangel yes. and Crocodile. Uh, you okay. want to start with Callister? Yeah, we'll start with Callister. What did you think of this one? Um, I liked it. I rank it as my second favorite episode of the new season. Okay. Um, I like, I thought, well, okay. So I liked all the acting. I thought the acting was great. Uh, even though, you know, it had recognizable people, which Black Mirror doesn't usually. Yeah. For the most part. Uh, I thought it was still good. Uh, Jesse Plemons. Yeah. You know, people is, on, in- I thought he was fantastic. Do you know what people call him on the internet? Either meth Damon, yeah. fat Damon, <laughs> meth Damon. That's the one that I see the most. That's meth my- Damon started when he was on breaking bad. Uh, but do you watch the show Fargo? Fargo? Fargo. Yeah. The show. No, I haven't watched it. So he was in season two of Fargo and he put on like 40 pounds or something like that for the role. Oh, really? And so that's when he got the name fat Damon. Gotcha. Well, I, I know him mostly from, uh, Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's, he's a great actor. He's really, uh, become pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, very pretty. Yeah. He really, really looked like Matt Damon in this episode though. Yeah. Especially when he was older in the, in the reality or whatever. Yeah. When he wasn't, uh, Captain Kirk. Yes. So. Uh, USS Callister, the, the, the whole premise of this episode is, um, Jesse Plemons created a, uh, fictional universe, like a VR, World of Warcraft, uh, No Man's Sky type world where people yes. can log on and explore the universe and kinda, kinda like Ready Player One almost. Um, where you just have spoiler alerts. <laughs> it's like Ready Player One. You just have that has ruined the movie. I am not looking forward to that movie. I don't know about you. Did you read the book yet? Uh, I didn't read the book, uh, but the trailer doesn't look too bad. Oh, it looks so bad. You would say that. Well, it's just all references. It's all about yeah, the eighties. That kind of what the book is. Yeah, and that's what makes a book really boring. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> always a critic. <laughs> but anyways, so. He creates this, this world where people, you know, everyone, I assume everyone is connected to it. Everyone is involved with it and it's just right. this massive thing. Um, this new girl is working at the office and she kind of has a crush on him or is like just She's enamored. Yeah. She, him. Like as a, just a famous she, person. She She's appreciates a, him. Yeah. And, uh, which is opposite of everybody else around him because they kind of treat him like dirt, even though he's the CTO of the company. Yes. Uh, they kind of treat him like he's a loser, uh, nobody. He's like a pushover kind of guy. Um, even the secretary, you yeah, know, who, even the interns. Yeah. They're just like douchey towards him. And I think a lot of that stems from the CEO who is, um, what's his name? The guy Liam McPoyle. What is it? No, well, I said his name from Always Sunny. Always Sunny. Uh, Jimmy his, Simpson. Uh, J- Jimmy Simpson. Yeah. He uh, he treats them like dirt, and so everyone else kind of yes. treats them 
So he's just like this big loser. And he just kind of takes it. Yeah. But it turns out what he does is he'll take people's DNA and bring them into his own, uh, his version. Version. Of what is the world called? I was, I was just trying to remember that. It was like, uh, st- uh I don't even remember. Basically, he's a big fan of this fictional show that's essentially Star Trek. Yeah. And he's like a big, you know, he, it's got all the collectibles, this and that. So he recreates that show with the ability for him to be in it with all of the, his coworkers. Yes. And they are pretty much duplicates of themselves, uh, in digital form. I guess, I don't know if digital is the right word, but yeah. So it. he, he processes their DNA and puts them into his own server at his house. And yes, it's where he is the king and. He could do whatever he wants and they pretty much have to do whatever he says. And what happens is from the moment he gets their DNA, their life is kind of time stamped there. So yeah. whatever they knew beforehand, they know now in the digital world, but their real life continues on and develops and grows and changes, but they have no connection to that anymore. And they have no idea that there's a copy of them that's tr- trapped the real person it's pretty it's yeah it's pretty much the same it's like cookie. idea like from the white christmas yeah, yeah. well there, i felt like this whole season hit on that idea a lot this whole season hit on itself like a yeah lot. yeah but uh which let me guess you hated a lot right uh there are certain things i really didn't like but of course <laughs> we'll get into it um but so Turns out in the real world, Jesse Flemons, Flemons, Fl- Plemons, Plemons, is kind of you feel bad for him. You feel yeah, like they build him up to be this pitiful character. Yeah, and so he goes home and goes in this world and is the hero and is like, you know, you're kind of rooting for him. Uh, and then it turns out when the people, when the new girl gets put into the world, she is like refusing to be a part of it and doesn't want to do anything. And then he gets sinister and starts torturing them to make them compliant. Yeah. He, yeah, he definitely shows, uh, he, he definitely uses this as a way to act out, you know, what he wishes he could do in real life that he can't. Yeah. Now, Here's the question. This is, I mean, this is what Black Mirror does. They're kind of the whole point is to make you question things. But yeah. is it torture if they're just a piece of code? Well, uh, yes. Uh, it, see, it's it's hard because although they are a piece of code, they are human enough to feel pain. Yeah. So it's. The fact that their code, it, it, it's essentially the same as if you made a human clone of a person. Maybe technically it's not a, like a, a real person, but it's still something that can be tortured. Yeah. And feel, feel, you know, pain and whatnot. So I would say that it's not illegal, but it is immoral. Yeah. Well, because like, say like with Grand Theft Auto, right? You run right. people over and you beat people up with bats and you shoot people and all that stuff. I follow the rules. Oh, do you? <laughs> I don't even run red lights. And I, I try to assist the police, uh, when possible. I don't <laughs> want to get in the way. <laughs> You're just a vigilante in, uh, Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, pretty much. Do Who you... follows the rules? But everyone else. I even wear a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> What's the button to wear a seatbelt? I'm not going to tell you. Oh. Dang it. It's like the a... Code. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had to, I had to unlock it. But, like, you would never you would never consider people's feelings in that. You know, like, the the the, the in, NPCs in that world are right. just disposable, right? Like, you never feel guilty about running over an old lady in Grand Theft Auto because Correct. there's no difference. Never. And that was a big thing. I don't know if you heard about the uh the video game Hatred. No. It doesn't sound familiar. 
it it was like this really weird game that when was uh, this? this is like a year ago. Okay. I, I think it was called Hatred. Um, I can't even. Oh, are you thinking of The Sims? Yes, The Sims. Okay, uh, that's so. The Sims expansion pack of Date Night. Um, but anyways, Hatred is like a top-down shooter where you go around and you just massacre a town. You shoot okay. people, you go in their houses, you kill them, you shoot the cops when they show up, kind of like Grand Theft Auto, but more just causing anarchy, just mass right. murder, you know, like, and it got this huge uproar over like, why is this even a game? This isn't a, this shouldn't be entertainment, like all this different stuff. Yeah. But if it was zombies, no one would care. You know, you right. could, you have run around and shoot up zombies and do all this different stuff. And so the idea of like, there's really no difference in a video game between a zombie and a person or, you know, a monster or an alien. Like it's just, just a different design, right? Like what you're doing is still essentially all the same, but because they're people, it becomes much more like, Oh, this is going to be problems in the real world. Right. And so it's an interesting thought of like, for Jesse Plemons character who becomes the villain who you despise because you start to relate with all the people on the thing for being tortured. Right. Does he realize that he's a villain? Oh no, I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like I think, I think he sees it as like, they treat me like this in real life. So I can treat him like this in my world, but and no harm, no foul. But not even that it's justified, but like, does no, he, it's, does he think that he is doing anything bad because they are just code? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, like, if you logged on to Grand Theft Auto again, right? And you ran someone over, right. you wouldn't care. So when Jesse Plemons takes away the girl's mouth and makes her suffocate, mm-hmm. how is that, is that similar, right? Is his, is his well, reaction it, to that? what you would be if you ran someone over in Grand Theft Auto. No, because he knows that they are feeling pain though. He's conscious of that. That's not, but it's not like he's unaware. Like, okay. If I found out today that this whole time that I've been playing Grand Theft Auto and not caring about anyone, if I found out that, Oh, it turns out that's real people this whole time, then I would feel bad. Yeah. It would be a whole different story, but I, I don't know if I would feel bad because if like, Cause there's games where you shoot someone, they go, ouch, whatever. Like that doesn't change anything, right? That's just a code, the response to something that happened, right? right? Wouldn't you just assume that them freaking out is just part of the code? Cause it, it kind of, well, it kind of goes back to white Christmas, like the cookie mm-hmm. was that torture to make her sit there for four months, even though it's not actually her. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, it, it, it's tough. And I want to say that I wouldn't be bothered, but I really don't know. It's, it's, I it's, mean, cause it's, it's, uh, it's a gray area. For yeah. Sure. I mean, the show clearly wants you to feel, to be on the side of the characters, right? Not right. The show wants you to hate Jesse Plemons character. Right. But is that reasonable? That's my question. Like he, he created a video game. No. He made characters that represent and are based off of people he knows. And he is treating them in a bad way because in real life they treated him poorly, but they're still not real. Right. And, and if, if that, if, if that was the extent of it, that he was just treating them poorly, mm-hmm. then I would say it, it's, it's not a big deal. But the fact that he goes out of his way to bring in the kid yeah. shows that he knows what he's doing is messed up because if, if it was, uh, <laughs> see, but even he that. knows that although it's code, that it's a real, not, uh, but it's, uh, it's so tough. But there's clearly, uh, uh, something different, right? Between his reaction to the video game world versus real life. 
because he right. doesn't do anything in the real life. He doesn't, he doesn't kill the kid in real life. No, but he, he'll do it. He'll, so what we're talking about, if I don't, I, I never feel like we need to say spoilers because I think if you, if you listen to a podcast or you watch a video that has the title of the thing that we're talking about, that should, should be better. a spoiler alert. Especially because this is going to be coming out in a couple months. Yeah. Like if You've we, had plenty of time. If we bring up Fight Club in the middle of this for no random reason and spoiler alert, Fight Club. That's when you say spoiler, right? But yes. if we're talking about Black Mirror and we spoil Black Mirror and it's titled Black Mirror and you are upset that we spoiled it, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> but anyway, so he Jimmy Simpson, the CEO, yes. is a jerk to Jesse Plemons' character and so Jesse Plemons decides, oh, I'm going to... So he, he gets Jimmy Simpson's character in the video game first. Jimmy yeah. Simpson is refusing all the way. He like never going to do anything for him. He doesn't listen. He's like real aggressive about not listening. So Jesse Plemons steals the DNA off of a sucker with his son, uh, Jimmy Simpson's son's char- or character's son, and gets the kid in the Tommy. game, Tommy. Takes Tommy, puts him in an airlock, and shoots him off into space. Kid freezes, dies, breaks into a million pieces. I assume. They but don't. here's the thing: mm-hmm. it, he does. He definitely doesn't die because he said no one dies unless I want them to die. That's true. So there's a good chance that he's out there, shattered in a million pieces, still conscious, just floating around. Yes. Every day, that's the way that he lives. Yes. But again, and it would no end in sight. He's not an actual person. And so right. my point is there's clearly a difference for Jesse Plemons character because he's not torturing <laughs> Jimmy Simpson's kid in real life, but is willing right. to do it in the video game because there's a disconnect somewhere. Like he, like, I, so he, so, so if he, he, if he was willing to do it in the real world, then I'd say, yes, he's definitely a villain, right? But okay. the, the disconnect between him doing it as a like a release versus him not doing it in the real world makes it more questionable if you should be glad. Because, okay, so he, at the end, he dies, right? Basically, he gets trapped in the world. He can't escape. Oh, There's, well, we'll talk about that, but he definitely dies. Yeah, well, he's going to die. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's dead at the end of the episode or not. No, I don't think he's dead at the end of the episode, but, uh, basically, earlier in the, just, I, I'll just talk yeah. about it now. Uh, earlier in the episode, the, one of the characters makes mention of having the 10 days off for Christmas. Yes. So he's gonna be at his house for 10 days. He put the do not disturb on his door when the pizza man was trying oh, to get that yeah. money from him. Yep. So he's going to be sitting there without food or water for 10 days. He's going to die. Yes. I don't think he was dead when we last saw him, but it's implied that he's going to die because you can't, he, he can't wake up. He can't wake up out of it by himself and no one is going to come to check on him. Yes. Not for at least 10 days. Yeah. Probably more even than oh, at 10 least. days. Yeah. So but, yeah. he's more than likely going to die. Yeah. So I think it's safe to say he's dead. Which right. begs the question, did he deserve death for what he did? Exactly. Yeah. So that was my whole, my whole question that I was trying to get to is, is that, was that the good thing? Should you be glad that he died? Is that a victory for these? So, cause everyone on the ship, all the code people survive. They get onto the main game. They get off of his private server, make it to the main, uh, online internet to the and, cloud, to the cloud and, are now free to roam and, you know, have this whole universe to explore, which is, you know, cool. But. Yeah, they, they pretty uh, much become like the real Star Trek crew. Yes. But Jesse Clemens is gonna die. The real person is going to die. And is that, where's the, and I, I think that might be the ultimate question of this episode. Is, is that right? Is that justified? No, of course not. Because, Morally bad, yes, but yeah. you can't give the death penalty to morally bad people who don't actually do anything wrong. Yeah. 
but to circle back just for a second. So do you think that it's okay for him to do what he does to the characters in the thing? Because it, he's not hurting anyone in real life and it's just code. So emotionally, when I was watching the show, I, I didn't like him. You know, I wanted him to get his comeuppance. I was on the right. side of all them. But in theory, in, or in, um, like thinking about it, I have a hard time saying that he was in the wrong doing it because they're not really people, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Which so, leads me to my next question. Uh oh. Would it, would you now, uh, would it be any different? <laughs> what are you going to do? You going to get creepy? <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> would it be any different if he used his virtual world to become like a child sex predator pedophile? And he just had a bunch of children characters in his thing. Yeah. Um, he's not doing it. It's the same concept. Yeah, he's yeah. not technically doing anything wrong, but should, should that even be allowed? Should something like that be against the law? Well, in, in, in that universe. Yeah. Uh, I would say it should not be allowed, but it also is not the same thing as actually doing the action, right? Like there's definitely a, right. A, a stark there's contrast. A difference between actually being a child predator and virtually being a child predator. Um, but if, if he's only doing these things in the game, mm -hmm. does it, sh should it be any different than what he actually does in this episode? Uh, well, Since none of it's real. So the only thing, and it, it's hard because it's kids, right? Right. Um, the only comparable thing, would be to him murdering the kid, right? Should you be allowed to murder children in a video game? Right. Um, Are you asking me that question? <laughs> well, it's kind of, I mean, a yes and no. And like, you don't have to answer it, but like, it's a, a hypothetical question, I guess. But like, where, where is the line of what is acceptable virtually? Uh, where, where's the line of what's acceptable virtually? Virtual. Um, Virtually. Yeah. And what's Virtuality. not. Virtuality. Right? Because I think right. we would both say going into a game and having sex with kids is wrong. Like that's seems right. like a pretty easy line to draw. But where does that line start? Right. Like. Because there's video games where you can go and, you know, you can have relationships with people and get married and have kids or whatever. That doesn't seem that strange. No, now what if, uh, yeah, it's such a gray area. What if in, in allowing this type of thing, uh -huh. it prevented it from happening in real life? Like that was, what if that was all a sex predator needed was the outlet, right? Yeah. And let him do whatever he wants in his own game that doesn't actually affect anyone. And then he doesn't do anything like that in real life. I think there's studies on that idea, and I think that's wrong. Well, yeah. I think, like, in, in real life, I think, you know, with pornography and different things like that, I think that they've, I, I could be wrong, but I, I believe mm -hmm. that it fuels the fire more than it quenches anything. Right. You know so, what I mean? So like, that was what I was getting to was, would it just become one of those things where how long before the, the virtual world is not enough? And they have to do it in real life. Yeah. Cause I mean, even the, it's hard because, uh, the idea of murdering in a video game doesn't seem to lead towards murdering people in real life, but how do you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. it's tough. Mm. <laughs> it is. It is. Which but, is, I think the reason it's so tough is because it's not, none of it is actually possible. Yeah. So there's no precedent. There's nothing that we can really base it on other than the actual fictional TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's what makes it so difficult. And I, I thought it was interesting that, uh, they made a point of showing that he wasn't doing any of this for sexual reasons in the show. Yeah, he he really just wanted to 
live in his Star Trek worlds and get respect from his coworkers. Yeah. And he, the stuff he does that's evil, right? Like he turns a couple of people into monsters and he won't. Right. So the only escape for these people is if they die. And the only way they die is if Jesse Plemons decides that they're going to die. And right. he doesn't. He normally just no. lets them live on. Um, there's one scene where he finally beats, de- defeats an, <sighs> an enemy. And the enemy's that part like, was so sad. Yeah. The enemy was I like, really felt sad for that guy. He's like, I've, I've been a good adversary been for a, you. Right? A worthy adversary, right? Like, yeah. please. <laughs> just, just, please. I've done everything you wanted. <laughs> But, and and there's a second where you think he might. Yeah. And then he says, nope, sorry, bud. Yeah. Um, Which is what the guy had told him earlier in the episode when he tripped over his gym bag. Oh, is that? I didn't re- like, catch Oh, sorry, that. bud. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's It's interesting because it's hard to call him the villain in reality, you know? Like, clearly. Right, it, it basically, everyone is the villain. Yeah. In, in in one way or another, except for, you know, the mother from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. She's really the only one who... Is a good person. Even though technically, she's probably the reason why he's going to die. Yes. Well, so, definitely. The, no, yeah, her, no one's her, completely innocent. Her character in the game contacts her actual person in real life and blackmails her and gets yeah. her to come and switch everything out and like sets everything up for Jesse Plemons to die basically. So the, here's, here's another question I have. So the crew escapes cause they go through the black hole, yeah. which was a uh, upgrade or a patch or whatever it was. Yeah. An update. Patch. And Jesse Plemons is left to wander space forever because he didn't make it. Yes. So what about that kid? He didn't make it. Well, there was he a, didn't go through that black hole. And also, I'm pretty sure Jimmy Simpson, did he ever make it? Uh, Jimmy Simpson was still on the ship, but I don't think they showed him once they went through the black hole. Because but, the last we see him, he's getting burned alive, pretty much. Yeah. Trying to re, you know, re-kickstart the, uh, the engines or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he, I thought he did a great job. Oh, he was fantastic. He, he was, really was. He was really good in Westworld, too. Oh yeah, really good. And it's impressive because Always Sunny, he's such a creepy person. You would not right, think yeah. he would be a, such a great actor, but he he does really good in this. Uh, um, yeah, I agree. But yeah, no, I it was an interesting episode because based on the episode, I thought it was great. But if it was a reality, it would be much more of a tragedy. Right, of course. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I liked it. I thought I thought USS Callister was a good one. I thought it was a good start to the season. Yeah. So moving on, unless you have anything else to say about that one, um, there there was another thing. Uh, so I I didn't actually catch this one. I I saw it. Someone had pointed out online. The day of the update, one of the guys, one of his 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 IT guys, or whatever, pretty much said, "Hey, do you want to run the?" The update now, or we can wait. And he basically put it off until midnight or whatever it was. Uh-huh. If he had just done it then, none of that would have happened. He could have avoided everything. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't play like a, an essential role. Yeah. But it's just something that happened. Well, the next episode is Archangel. Okay. Archangel. That was, a, uh, that was decent. Yeah. I was super stressed for about the first 10 minutes of this episode because, so this one, the idea is you have an insert you can put into your child's eye that will let you see what they see, will let you block out things that are upsetting uh, visually Uh and uh, the sounds and all that. You can track them. You You can can track them. You can pretty much do everything. Yeah. It's like... You've placed a helicopter parent. Yeah. And well, uh, yeah, essentially that's what it's all about. Um, and so she's got a three year old who runs away and it's like real stressful. I don't know how you felt about watching it, but having, having little kids myself, it's like, Ooh. Oh, very much. Yeah. And, uh, so, but she finds her 
and then they go and put this thing in and then the up until the girl so she was three in the beginning and then I think she was like six yeah, once she got like the that. thing in. I was so stressed because I was like, I know this is going to go somewhere terrible. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm worried that it's going to be something just so upsetting that, you know, it's just going to ruin my day. Right. Which is <laughs> classic Black Mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I, you know, I just don't want to, it's just sad to torture kids on TV for entertainment. Right. But thankfully they got through all that. Pretty quick. The girl gets to be 16, 17. Well, so when she's like eight years old, she's going to school and is like so socially awkward because she's missing out on all these experiences and, you know, doesn't see all this stuff and, um, is just having a lot of problems and her friends are describing to her what blood even looks like and what all this stuff is. And so she's like drawing a picture and she tries to draw blood on the guy's head, but it gets fuzzed out. And so she stabs. Which is crazy. Yeah. Well, and then she stabs herself. Still... Go, 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 keep going. She stabs I'll herself. Get back to it. She stabs herself <laughs> with a pencil, uh, to make herself bleed and that gets bl- blurred out. But the, uh, mom's head, handset starts going off like, Hey, there's a problem. You need to check on it. Mm-hmm. So she runs in and the girl's like stabbing herself and, uh, just on the finger with a pencil. Mm-hmm. And so the mom is like, Oh, I've, I've clearly have done something terrible. You know, this, mm-hmm. this is causing mental, um, anguish to my daughter takes her back to the place and they're like, we can't remove it, but you can just turn it off. And yeah. so the mom's like, all right. And so for the next eight years, the girl lives without it and is experiencing life more normal and like filling in gaps that she didn't have understanding of growing up and all this different stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she gets into a relationship with and Kylo Ren with, yeah, with junior Kylo Ren Jr. And, uh, starts lying to her mom. And when she starts lying to her mom and it's not where she says she's going to be, the mom starts using the head, the handset again. She's able to yeah. turn it back on. And the, I mean, the girl's, you know, pretty normal teenager and the mom is watching all the stuff that's going on. And, uh, starts, you know, following her and finds out she's having sex, finds out she's doing drugs and, you know, it's just all this different stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. And so she, she, she tries to go back into that super, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, super sheltered mode again. Yeah. But it just causes issues with the daughter because she's already, lived life without the thing and she I don't know she she doesn't uh, I can't even think of the words that I'm trying to say <laughs> well so the mom what ha- what what ends up happening is her boyfriend who I believe was an adult or over 18 the girl's like 15 16 so the boy's older than her uh goes to his work and is like I saw what you did and showed him pictures and stuff like that of them together and, uh, she's like, if you ever go around my daughter again, I'm going to contact the police. And the guy's like, tells the girl, he's like, I'm done with you. I, you know, like, don't contact me anymore. Daughter mm-hmm. finds out that it was the mom who broke him up and then yep. beats the mom. I, I thought for a second she was going to kill him, kill her. Yeah. So did I. She didn't. She beat her with the headset and shattered it against her mom's face and then ran away from home. And so. The idea is kind of the more you, you know, like try to protect your kid, the more they're going to try to escape that protection. Yeah. And uh, yeah, pretty much. It was, uh, it was, a, it was an interesting episode. It, I didn't feel like it was, um, groundbreaking in any way, you know, no, like no, all the technology seemed to be, have already established in other episodes. So that wasn't anything new. And the idea right. of a helicopter parent not working out isn't anything new or revolutionary, you know? But, like, it was done well. I'm basically showing that it, with or without technology, like, you you can only interfere in parenting your kids' lives, you know, so much before, like, it doesn't matter what you do. 
you can you're, you're going to drive them away. Essentially, is yeah. Well, what I, I took from it, I was talking with my wife about it, and uh, just like our experiences growing up, and you know, our friends and family, how they are there, how they were raised, yeah. and stuff like that, and like just we all had such different experiences, and we all ended up in different places. There's no like yeah. one perfect way, right? Like you. You can have a ton of rules and be very overbearing and it work out great or work out terribly. And you can be super loose and let it th- your kids do whatever and it can work out great and it can work out terribly. Mm-hmm. There's no, yeah. there's no, you know, direct. There's no formula. Yeah. There's no formula to raising kids. It's just every case is different. You never know how it's going to turn out until it's already happened. But, uh, yeah. So it was, is, um, uh, I don't know. what do you think about this episode? I I liked it. It was good. Um, like I said, it, it it didn't have the dark tone as dark tone to it. Yeah. As as I you know was anticipating, but still good. I want to circle back. So when the girl is six or whatever. Yeah. And up until this point, everything traumatic has been blurred out. You know, it it's not it's not blurring out what the. I guess necessarily what the world would see as traumatic, Mm -hmm. but what a child would perceive as traumatic, you know, like the loud dog barking and this and that. Yeah. So if she's never seen blood, right? Yes. She has no feelings towards it. She doesn't really even understand what it is. When she draws the blood, I don't get why that immediately blurred. Like, since she's never seen it and knows really nothing much about it, yeah. it shouldn't it shouldn't be traumatic. Well, I think you know, maybe the the stabbing because now all of a sudden there's pain associated with it. But just the fact that she drew it on the paper, I, that part I, I was like, well, that shouldn't have been blurred out because that's that's not getting any kind of um, emotion out of her because she doesn't know what it is. But I think it would. I think if she knew she wasn't supposed to see it, do you know what I mean? Like. She, she grew up and people, she had heard about it and, you know, like, it was always blocked from her vision. Right. But the, it's just, it's just the color red on a paper, which I'm sure she's drawn many times. Yeah. It, but my point is, I think, because she drew a person who had their head hit in with a brick. And right. so I think she knew what she was doing was bad. And so when she drew the blood, she was aware that it was bad. And so whatever her emotions for drawing it sparked the parental lock on her device. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think her, like, I, I get what you're saying. I just, I, I could see how it could work. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense as much as a Black Mirror episode can. Yeah. Um, um, I'll tell you my, my theory for how I thought it was going to end. And then it started looking like it, uh, but then it, it, it didn't. I thought she was going to become so angry with her mom. You know, once she finds out that she's been spying on her, this and that, that she was going to kill her maybe with the, you know, with the device, maybe not, but whatever was going to happen was the thing was going to break mm-hmm. and it was, she was going to be stuck in that parental mode yeah. where everything everything is is blurred out and then she was going to like be arrested and go to prison and everyone around her is blurred out because there's you know inmates that are threatening and there's guards that are terrorizing and like just the rest of her life was going to be stuck in this prison where she everything's blurred out to her yeah yeah kind of like white mirror yeah pretty much or white christmas white christmas yeah yeah i thought that was going to happen too when she was hitting her mom because every time she hit her mom, the the settings would change, and right, that's when I was like, "Oh wow, it's happening!" Yeah, but then she was still alive. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this one, I don't have a ton to say about it. It was interesting, I guess. It was, it wasn't the best episode, but it also wasn't the worst. No, it was. I would say, it is my fourth favorite of the season. Yeah. I rank well, it number four. Next is Crocodile. And Crocodile was, I don't know, this is a difficult one. Yeah, it was decent. I This one I rank five. F- fifth out of, five out of six? Out of, five out of six. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the lower end for me too. So this, But it wasn't bad. Yeah. 
this the hmm. I wanted more from it. I what, think why don't, I don't you explain the what? plot? Okay, so this one stars Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> as a as a crazy lady. Right, so basically <coughs> she I got to remember how this one starts. Her and her boyfriend when they're in like college hit a guy on a bicycle and kill him. Right, okay. So they're yeah, they're driving, they hit a guy and he dies. It's out in the middle of nowhere so there's no witnesses. And instead of calling the police, they decide to dispose of the body. Well, he decides, and, basically. Yeah, the, the boyfriend decides to dispose of the body. That would be the easier way to go. And for I, which Because they were they, high and drunk the night before, he was right. like, I'm definitely going to get uh, – something is going to come up. Either, you know, like I, I'm going to have yeah, too much drugs in my in system. This. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to get in trouble for substance abuse of some sort. Which, which I wonder, see, but it didn't show that they were like driving erratically or anything like that, right? No. I think it was just an accident. Like, yeah, maybe yeah. the guy accidentally drove out in front of him. Yeah, I, I mean, it could even have been, it could have even been a suicide, but. Right, he could have done it on purpose. Yeah. But, but here's, because here's, here, his, the ahead. guy's blood wouldn't have been clean, he would have definitely gotten in trouble for it. But I wonder, if that's true, because if they were able to prove that the drugs and alcohol were not an actual factor, would there still be consequences? And the reason I say that is because there was a case here in Bakersfield a few years ago where a guy was drunk. Right. Uh-huh. And he was driving home one night and he was going through an intersection and another drunk driver had ran her red light and hit him. Mm. Now he was, he was well over the limit, but since he was not technically in the wrong, there was no actual punishment for that. Even though, yeah, he shouldn't have been drinking and driving. But he didn't do anything wrong. You know, he had yeah. a green light. He went through and it was the other drunk driver who hit him instead. Yeah. So he didn't actually get in trouble for that. So I wonder if if that's typical. I don't know how often that kind of situation happens. Yeah. But I wonder. I don't. I wonder if that if something like that matters. Well, now, obviously, it would be hard to prove that you weren't driving erratically because there's no witnesses. Yeah. And it would look pretty bad. But well, if you, I don't, I don't know. If you are sober, and you are driving, and you hit someone on a bicycle on accident. And yes. you kill them, you are still liable, I believe, for manslaughter. You may not be uh, convicted and go to prison for it, but you can still right, be. Right, you'd still have charges brought against you more than likely. And then so if and you we- have any, if you are not sober, then you're definitely, something is going to happen. Right, it, it doesn't look good, yeah. right? Especially if you have to sit in front of a jury. But... I don't know. I don't know. We're debating what doesn't even matter in this episode. <laughs> it was just, it, it, when I saw that, it reminded me of the, the situation that happened here. Yeah. Because I don't even think charges were brought against the guy, even though he was drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That just sounds like a good lawyer or like a. It might have been. Like a, a <clears throat> not necessarily a good lawyer. <laughs> Cause I don't know if that's a, a noble thing to get it, someone it, off of, but. That sounds like a lawyer, an wo- effective lawyer, an effective lawyer. Thank you. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough because I know that the the woman, the driver. Oh, you know, because I think that the dry, the drunk driver who ran the red light, it was uh-huh. a woman. I think that she died, mm. and her family was trying to sue the other guy. Oh, that doesn't seem reasonable. But it didn't. It didn't hold because even though he was drunk and he was impaired. He didn't run the red light like she did. Yeah. Basically, they were trying to say that if he wasn't, you know, then maybe he could have like avoided the accident or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, that's crazy. It, I it mean, didn't hold up. And he could have still gotten charged with the DUI too. They probably wouldn't even bring that up in uh, in the newspaper because that, you know, he might have. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just know that because they had to. There was a clear separation between the two events. The DUI and the actual car accident, because his DUI didn't cause the car accident. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I, I could. I, 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 something, something along those lines. Yeah. But anyways, back to Black Mirror. All right, so Crocodile. they ditch the body in the lake, or in a yeah, it's it's a lake, and go about their business, and uh, for like twelve years. Yeah, I was gonna say some time goes by. Was it twelve years? Something like that. Her kid is nine. That's right. Um, I'm, 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 bl- I'm <laughs> so on a blank. She the next we see them in the hotel room, right? Yeah. So she she's on a business trip. She does like speaking engagements, and he comes to visit her because she is in his town, I assume. And he's like, "Hey, I saw in the newspaper the guys." The guy we killed, his wife is still trying to figure out what happened even this much later. Yeah. I'm going to send her a letter and, you know, let her know that he's dead, that we killed him, that we're sorry. I'm not going to say who it was from. I'm not going to give any of that information. But, you know, I, I just have to do this. And she's like, no, you made me dispose of the body. This was your idea. Yeah. I've carried yeah. this secret for you for 12 or whatever, however many years it's been. You are not going to do this. You are going to destroy our lives. Everything that I have is going to be taken from me. You can't do this. I stuck by you when you made a bad decision. Now you need to live with it. And he was like, no, I'm, I, I have to tell her. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, his, his guilt was, was, was getting to him. He had to, he had to get, it, he had to get it off his chest. So. To avoid that, she kills him. Yes. And then, like, moments later, so she's in a hotel room. She kills him. And l- moments later, she's standing at her window, and she sees a guy crossing the street, and he gets hit by a pizza truck. Yeah, which is like van a, or whatever it was. an automated pizza delivery car. Almost like a red right. box on wheels that delivers pizza. Yeah, pretty much. It's like a pizza ice cream man. Yeah, without the man. Right, so she witnesses that and uh, doesn't really. It is just kind of a non-event. Care. Yeah, she just closes. Yeah, the because she just killed somebody. So, come to find out, now there is a. I guess is she like an insurance? Yeah. So the guy like a claims adjuster. Or... The, Go ahead. The guy who got hit by the pizza car, I assume, is suing the pizza company because yes. he, you know, broke his arm. And he was going to go on tour with a, an orchestra. Couldn't do that because yeah. his arm's broken. So he needed a, a giant sum of money that he would have gotten, but he couldn't now. So this insurance claims adjuster, whatever, uh, lady is piecing together what happened to get proof to help him win his case. Right. So you come to find out that they have the technology to be able to replay people's memories. Um, but it seems like it's limited, right? It, it's still sort of based on their own recollection. Yeah. So it's they a, have to kind of remember what happens for it to really work. It's a, for it to broadcast on her little TV. Yeah. You project your thoughts basically onto her screen. So whatever you're thinking about at the time will show up on her screen. So she can't dictate what she sees. She tries to guide people like, hey, you know, think about that time. Think about what was going on. She has the, yeah, the, the, the smell, the beer, because the, there's the, the um, sounds. The, there's a brewery on yeah, the street. A brewery on the street. And this this really bothered me was the song. Because I, I love that song. song. And I loved every time they used it in all the yeah. other seasons. In yeah. this one, I was like, oh, this is unreasonable. They play it four times. I was going to say, was it because you have to hear it so many times? Yeah, and the time when she's like, oh, I love this song, was like so – it was just too much. Like it, it was so unnecessary. That, that last time? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just like, – because it's an original song for the show, right? The girl oh, sings it. Really? it. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, sure? I'm I almost I positive. I think so. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it is. like a song from the 60s or something like that. I, I don't know, but either way. Um, but they use it. They use it in every season, right? It's kind of a like a Easter egg almost. Um, it's, yeah, because like it connects the, all the stories. Yeah, but uh, in this one, it was just it was just 
too much. No. Okay, yeah. Th- it, it's not an original song. It's, it's not? S- no, it's from 1966. Okay. I think they re-recorded it for this show with the original uh, singer, but it's it's not for the show. Gotcha. All right. Well, anyways, they use it over and over. Right. And in this episode, it just felt too much to me. I don't know. How'd you feel that's about because it? it was, that's because it was part of the actual plot, which we haven't seen. I know, but, but they, they chose that. You know what I mean? They wrote that in. Right. They could have picked any song. It didn't have to be that song. Like, it was all intentional. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. It, but it, it didn't stand out to me. Yeah. But anyways, she is talking to him and getting information. Yeah, so she, she talks to him first. He gives his uh, recollection of what happens. She uses that to track down a potential witness that had passed him on the street to see if she saw anything. So she finds this woman, does the same thing, uh, helps her remember that night. The woman then sees a man taking a picture in a window and uh, somehow is able to track that guy down. I don't remember exactly what led to that. Was uh, it just because of the location? I think it was, of, I think it was, it was in a, his own house, right? I think it was a facial or, recognition. Yeah, that's right. So then she goes and talks to that guy, uh, pulls up his, you know, memory. <laughs> and that guy was a creep. He was taking oh, a picture. Absolutely. <laughs> He's trying to take of a picture of a guy's naked butt. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> so through that guy's, uh, recollection, she's able to see the murderer, um, the Ellen DeGeneres. The, oh yeah. She sees Ellen DeGeneres. So then she's able to track her down by going to the hotel and pretty much figuring out who was in the room at that time. Uh, uh she, no, she cause tried they tried that. Yeah. They tried that. She talked to the front desk and he, he, they wouldn't. They couldn't give her up, give her up. Right. I'm trying to remember how she ended up finding this woman. Do you remember? Uh, I think it was all facial recognition again. I think she just kept running it through. Mm, okay. And she found someone who was in the town doing a speaking engagement. Right. Did, uh, like, she found someone who looked similar. And then checked where she was and realized she was in the town. And she was like, oh, I got to okay. go talk yeah, to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So then she is uh, talking to this woman and pulling up her memory. And the woman pretty much outs herself. Well, she refused by... at first. Right. She, she didn't want to do it. And the lady was like, hey, you, you know, it's it's part of the law. If you don't do it, yeah, I have to con- have to. I have to contact the police and the police are going to come and just a lot more difficult. Like I'm, if it's just me and you, no one's going to know what you are doing and like, it, it's yeah. fine. You're like, cause she, she thought it was just embarrassing. She didn't think it right. was murder. Yeah. She thought she was. Yeah, exactly. So in giving this woman her memories, she inadvertently, Shows like a first, like a short clip of her pretty much killing her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend and then even shows a flashback of hitting the dude, you know, 12 years earlier, uh, alerting the, uh, or make, you know, making the woman suspicious. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to take over there because I'm trying to, (laughs) so she gives up, she gives up the memories of killing her ex-boyfriend. And the biker, yeah. the, the Indian girl, the insurance adjuster, uh, like panics is like, all right, well, that's everything I need. And it's like knows that this lady's crazy and is trying but to make it out. pretty obvious that yeah. she saw something. Well, he, well, the lady knew too, because she would have seen it in her head. She would have known that's that. True. Yeah. And so she, the Ellen DeGeneres lady is like, Hey, you know, sometimes I just have crazy thoughts. Like it's no big deal. But the other lady's like, yeah, yeah, no. And, uh, 
So the lady busts the, she gets in her car, can't get her car started. And the other lady breaks the window and ties her up in the barn. And Mm -hmm. is like, does anyone else know that you were here? And she finds out, I think she watches her memory and realizes like, oh no, your husband knows that you're here. So she, she kills her. Ellen DeGeneres lady kills the Indian lady, goes to her house, murders her husband in the bathtub. Right. And then she's leaving and there's a little baby staring at her and she's, it fades to black with her like not being sure what to do mm-hmm. and shows up at her, her kids music recital. Yes. Then it cuts back to the police. The police they're are at the house the crime scene. and they're like, who would kill a baby? You know, and they, they make it clear that the lady killed the baby. Mm-hmm. To protect her herself from, so she's trying to clean up all the loose ends. Anyone who sees her, she just keeps her, killing people instead. Yeah, she just everyone who sees her, she kills. And this is where this was my biggest issue with this episode was there they had two options and they took them both and it made each one weaker. They say, oh, but the baby was blind, so why even kill the baby? So that was yeah. that was the first one. But they're like, but we have the hamster and we can see if we can pull any information from what the hamster saw. Mm -hmm. You either should have been one or the other. Yeah. You either just kill the baby, don't have the baby blind and the hamster saw everything or the baby was blind and she would have gotten away with it anyways without having to kill the baby. Exactly. She still gets away with it. The baby's blind, but the baby's dead and gets away with it. Like it, she, it was unnecessary to kill the baby. That should have been. Exactly. So it was either the hamster catches her, the baby's not blind, the baby's blind and dead, but that's the reveal that she didn't need to kill the baby. But yeah. because they chose, they did both, I felt like it really weakened each other. Yeah, I definitely should have picked one or the other. I yeah. don't know. I, I guess it, yeah, it weakens it. <sighs> hmm. Which would you have preferred? Uh, oh, man. I know. I'm the same. <laughs> the dead baby being blind. Yeah, that, it, it has to be that way. It's yeah. more tragic for Black Mirror. Yeah. That would have been a stronger choice, I think. I felt like the hamster thing was kind of weird, because how are you going to guide a hamster's memory into telling you what you want to see? Yeah, right? Or who says the hamster even saw? What if he was sleeping or turned around? Yeah, or hiding. Or, or, or taking a drink. Yeah, exactly. It's... Yeah. Yeah, but, but they 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 did get enough because they were able to arrest her. So well, maybe I mean that's the assumption. The police show up at the recital, and then it, the episode ends. That's true. Um, but yeah, it was it was okay. I felt like it was very predictable. I knew I felt like I knew where each step was going after yeah. about halfway through the episode. Like it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't that exciting. But it was a good episode. It was interesting concepts. Um, I felt like the ending, if they would have chose one or the other, it would have been a lot stronger. Yeah, and that is why I ranked this one number five. Well, we will be back. Uh, I don't know what day this is coming out, but our next episode should be on, episode should be on the second half of season four of Black Mirror. Yeah, correct. But uh, if you want to go over to Patreon, you can help support us. Uh, you can help decide who is going to pay the punishment. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod, or you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash I seen that. Fantastic.